On August 1, 2017, China opened a military base here, in Djibouti, a small country in the Horn of Africa. But China is not the only one here. In fact, it's fair to say they just came to the party late. France never left Djibouti even after independence and has three military bases. The United States has been here since 2002 when they opened Camp Limonier, its largest and only permanent base in Africa. Japan opened its only overseas base here in 2011. Italy opened one here in 2014. Spanish and German forces are present as well and utilize the French bases. Elsewhere on the continent, British forces operate a base in Kenya, the Turkish has one in Somalia, and the Emiratis have one in Eritrea. Across the continent, the French have bases in most former colonies in Central and West Africa. The United States has multiple installations as well. Russia is planning to open bases in five African countries. What is going on? Initially, France was the only country with a military presence in Djibouti. After Djibouti declared independence from France in 1977, the two countries entered into a mutual defense treaty. France agreed to defend Djiboutian territory, airspace, and territorial waters. In return, France could establish military bases which helped establish some influence in a geostrategic region. Djibouti has since turned into a magnet for other overseas military. The country's location makes it attractive. It's close to the Bab al-Madab Strait which connects the Red Sea to the Gulf of Aden. The strait is a choke point in one of the busiest shipping corridors in the world as it is the only entrance and exit to the Suez Canal. About 12% of global shipments flow through this corridor daily making it significantly important to global trade. Therefore, multiple countries are competing to have control and influence in this region. The waterway at the Gulf of Aden is also one of the most pirated in the world. This has resulted to an increased presence of international navies in the region. For the United States, the location of Camp Lemonir is key for the drone missions in its interventions in Somalia and the war in Yemen. Its agreement allowed its drones to operate on the adjacent Ambuli International Airport. Between 2011 and 2013, five Predator drones crashed, including one next to a neighborhood. There was a concern of the risk the drones were posing to nearby public and the civilian aircraft which used the same runway. In 2011, two US drones had crashed within a period of four months on the runway of Seychelles main airport. To avoid a similar incident, Djibouti requested the US to move the drones to the remote airfield base in Chabeli, which is operated by the French military. The decision to move the drones was prompted by a complaint from the Djibouti government following a number of recent drone crashes. Camp Lemonnier and the Djibouti airport share a runway and officials worried about the risks of having drones mingling with commercial aircraft flights. Observers say the possibility of a U.S. drone causing a commercial plane to crash is not a risk the U.S. military can afford to take. For China, the location of its naval base is increasingly important due to its growing assets in Africa. The country has spent trillions of dollars in investments across Africa. In return, China is betting on expanding its influence on the continent. The base in Djibouti also lies along the corridor for its One Belt One Road initiative. China is not done and it's looking to open up more bases in the west coast of Africa. This is just one of its many cards in its ambitions to be a global superpower, but at what cost to Africa? China spent $14 billion on investments and loans to Djibouti between 2011 and 2020. 70% of Djibouti's debt is owed to China. What happens if Djibouti defaults on the debt? Could this be China's long game to acquire strategically positioned infrastructure? Turkey uses Camp Taksum in Mogadishu, Somalia as a training center for Somali soldiers fighting Al-Shabaab militants. The base is part of a comprehensive foreign policy by Turkey which involves humanitarian initiatives. Since 2011, Turkey has invested and committed to maintaining stability in the country. A stable Somalia is beneficial to Turkey. Today, Somalia has become a major destination for Turkish goods and services. Markets are filled with Turkish-made products. Mogadishu's air and sea ports are operated by Turkish farms, and Turkish Airlines has direct flights to Somalia. Turkey's ambitions in Somalia are not just economic, 
the two countries share a common Sunni Muslim religion and culture. The United Arab Emirates utilized its base in Nasab Eritrea for its military campaign in Yemen. This base was built up after Emirati and Saudi troops were evicted from Djibouti after diplomatic relations broke down. Eritrea took advantage of the opportunity and signed a 30-year agreement with the Emiratis. The Emiratis have started winding down their efforts in Yemen. In February 2021, they started dismantling the base in Asab. Across the continent, France still maintains a disproportionate influence over its former colonies in Central and West Africa. However, its largest deployment of over 5,000 soldiers is in the center of the Sahel region. In 2013, the then government of Mali requested the French for support after militants seized some towns in the northern part of the country. After the success of the mission dubbed Operation Savo, a follow-up mission was launched in 2014 to continue fighting the insurgency. France is helping fight extremists. However, is that enough motivation to continue risking the lives of its soldiers? Or is it there for geostrategic and economic reasons as well? A U.S. aircraft carrier group enters the South China Sea at a time of rising tensions between Washington and Beijing. The growing rivalry between various powers can be destabilizing. Tensions between the U.S. and China have been growing in the South China Sea. The rivalry is also playing out in Djibouti. Pentagon says someone near a Chinese military base in Djibouti has been using lasers like that to interfere with U.S. military planes. This activity poses a true threat to our airmen. After strict verification, we have told the U.S. side that what they alleged is absolutely untrue. There is a risk for such tensions escalating. It's worth noting the two countries' bases are just 13 kilometers apart. The presence of Japan and China means that part of the tensions in the East China Sea have been exported to Africa. One final question. Should African countries continue to allow foreign militaries to establish bases?